Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to mod the memory voltage on a GTX 1080 FTW or 1070 FTW or 1070 Ti FTW2 or 1080 FTW2 or 1070 FTW2. Yeah, because all of these, all five of these cards use the exact same uh, memory VRM, though the FTW2 cards have a different uh, vCore VRM because the original FTW cards had a tendency to do this. Um, so, yeah, uh, which is why I have a 1080 FTW. Yes, the card works. We will probably have a video soon about it. Um, I did a live stream with that card, so, uh, yeah, you, you probably missed it. Um, and I don't think it's going to be up on Twitch for much longer. Anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, and on that card I modded the memory voltage because GDDR5X, uh, scales with memory voltage, so... You want to be able to raise the memory voltage on these cards. The same is true for 1080 Ti's, but most of those use a different memory... Actually, I don't think any of those use this memory power delivery circuit, so... Uh, I'm not even sure that they use this controller, necessarily. They might, but... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. So this only applies to the 1080 FTW, 1070 FTW, you know, and then the FTW2 cards, because the memory VRM never had any issues, so that's always... that's that's the same between... Uh, both of those card lineups. So let's get into it. The chip that you need to pay attention to is this thing right here. That is a NCP81278. Uh, um, this is a two phase uh, voltage, con like memory VRM controller, which you only ever see it for memory power. Um, it's kind of rare. Um, I think Palette has a few cards that use it, but mostly I've seen it on EVGA uh, FTW cards. Um, and uh, the cool thing about this controller is that it uses the PWM vid interface, and the PWM vid interface makes vault modding NVIDIA GPUs super convenient, because uh, you basically just have to mess with three pins on the chip, uh, which are these three right here. Now, uh, how would you do the, like, the whole point of this video to me is to show you how you would, you know, the methodology behind this. So, uh, here we have the, the data sheet for the NCP81278. This is a on-semiconductor chip, which you can kind of tell from the part number. Um, this is a pretty standard, like, on-semiconductor digit, like, number sequence. They have a lot of chips that start with, like, 812, uh, like, there's an 81274, uh, I think there's even an 81272. Um, yeah, and, like, 812 is, like, a pretty c common start, like, yeah, um, so, that's a on-semiconductor part number, because the thing is, you don't get the NCP, like, th this chip is too small to have the NCP in, in its name on the chip, so, uh, yeah, that's part of how you can sort of make a guess at who makes the chip, is just certain manufacturers have certain digit sequences that they kind of like to use, um, so anyway, two-phase, um, controller with integrated gate drivers. We don't care about that. All we care about is the PWM vid interface. Um, so if we scroll over to the actual pinout of the chip, um, this right here tells us the orientation of the chip, right? We have that corner there. So if we look at the, the card, uh, we actually get the same thing. You can see how like we have the silk screen doing this, and then in this corner you have this flat line, um, but you also have this dot on the chip itself, so that's our orientation dot. That indicates uh, pin one right like so pin one right there um so on the card itself we've got pin one right here now the pins we actually care about are uh these three over here um along with well th this one you kind of need to know why it's there so basically the pwm vid standard is called the pwm vid standard because nvidia wanted a really cheap way to implement voltage control with a minimum number of pins uh, there's other vid standards like SVID, um, which is serial vid. There's also parallel vid, which needs a bajillion pins. And while easy to mod is, or can set, like theoretically easy to modify, practically speaking is a lot of soldering because you have like eight different pins on a chip that control the output voltage, which is not great. PWM vid is much simpler because, uh, yeah, like NVIDIA wanted a really like cost optimized uh, vid interface. And so basically, you feel like the GPU core connects to the vid pin over here and it sends a PWM signal. Now, if you knew enough about the NVIDIA drivers, I think you could probably get software voltage control by just, like, getting control of that. But I don't actually know how you would do that, so uh, we're going to do this the soldering iron method because that's way easier, <laughs> in my opinion, than trying to mess around with software. Um, 
So anyway, PWM signal comes into the vid pin. Uh, that then gets converted into an analog signal that comes out of the vid buff pin. And then that goes through a bunch of random junk that ultimately is sort of like, you basically have, we're, we're going to put a little box uh, and we're going to call that box magic. Um, <laughs> it's not that complicated, but I don't feel like explaining what's going on in there. Anyway, so vid buff connects to that, ref in connects to that, and vref connects to that. Vref is a two volt output. This literally just sits at two volts. Um, and it's generated by the NC, uh, NCP 81, uh, 81278. Um, ref in, this pin is the one we actually care about because whatever voltage is being applied to the ref in pin is the voltage it's actually going to try to output. So you can kind of see what's going on with the vid buff. Um, basically, uh, the voltage coming out of vid buff is combined with the vref voltage inside this magic circuit. Um, and that then goes to ref in and that sets your output voltage. So... What we want to do is we actually like basically want to disconnect vid buff from the magic circuit so that potentially like so that the driver can't get in the way. Now potentially like this might not be necessary but on a lot of cards you might have like an idle power state for the memory and and stuff and so I generally like to just disconnect the stock voltage controls because the there's nothing more annoying than you try to you know modify the voltage with your vault mod and then the software decides to like counteract whatever modification you've done which is a very real off a very real issue that you run into at least with vcore on nvidia gpus where if you start offsetting the core voltage upwards the driver starts compensating by pulling it downwards which is just like could you not please i'm trying to raise the voltage here um so as a policy i just remove vid buff connections so we remove this and then you just want to put a potentiometer uh, across ref in and vref, ref um, where you just kind of do this. Um, and you don't even need to connect that potentiometer to ground or anything because you literally just want to control how close vref is to two volts. So uh, you do, like, I normally put a limiting resistor in series with that. Um, and so I guess let's actually move over to the card itself. So... On the card itself, what I've just explained is, um, so we have our vid buff pin over here. You remove this transistor, uh, I mean, this resistor, you just remove that. Just remove that and bye-bye vid buff. No more vid buff anymore. Uh, on the 1080 FTW, what that leaves you with is a ref in voltage of 1.35 volts at this point. Um, and I would assume if you did this on a 1070, uh, it would leave you with a ref in voltage of 1.5 volts because that is the default GDDR5 operating voltage. And you really, like, the thing is, uh, 10 series cards actually use this circuitry for, like, a low voltage idle state for the memory. Um, but you can't, I don't think you want to be booting your memory at idle. Like, you want to, like, your memory should boot up at 1.5 volts, and then you can idle it once you're in the operating system. But during the boot up procedure, you want to be booting up to 1.5 volts. So I would assume that a 1070 boots up to a stock voltage of 1.5 volts. I can't verify that because I don't have a 1070 on hand to check. Um, though I have been eyeing some of them on eBay. But unfortunately, I've not come across another blown up FTW card because... Like, working 1070s are surprisingly expensive for some reason. Anyway, um, yeah, so you're, if, if you're on a 1080, though, you remove vid buff, and at this point, you have 1.35 volts on, on uh, VREF over here, um, right? And as you can see, that actually connects to these two components. So this is now going to be sitting at 1.35 volts, um, and then, of course, VREF is over here, and that sits at 2 volts. Now, what you're going to want to do... Um, is you're going to run, you know, you're going to solder some wires basically over here. Um, so you're like, don't, well, okay, you can solder the wires directly to the pins. I've done that. I don't like doing that because it is very fiddly. Those pins are very, very small. And while it's not impossible, it's just far easier if you just, you know, solder to like an 0201 or 0402. Actually, I think these are 0402 components. Yeah, it's much easier to just solder your wires to the 0402 capacitors instead of like, the oh like the the i think they're 0.1 millimeter pin pitch or something like that um like i i don't remember the the pin size for this chip either way it doesn't matter the pins are very small and they're annoying to solder to so i don't recommend it unless you're absolutely desperate <laughs> which there are certain situations like parallel vid mods on some cards you have to do them from the actual pins on the controller because 
of how those PCBs are sometimes designed. But anyway, so here I would probably solder to the like the capacitor, and then here I would actually take advantage of the fact that you have like two components that are connected to the same wire. So I'd actually solder to both of them so that the connection is a bit more reliable. Um, you want to put a limiting resistor on this because if you set your memory voltage to two volts, it'll probably destroy your memory controller or it'll destroy the memory chips, one of the two, maybe both. Um, I don't know, I've never tested it, but at least the documentation for specifically GDDR5X very clearly states that your memory voltage should never exceed the pump voltage, and the pump voltage is 1.8 volts. So if you set your V, so if you turn your potentiometer or you wire up the potentiometer in such a way that your initial boot up voltage is two volts, you can probably say goodbye to the GPU. You don't want to do that. Uh, so what I do is I put a 1K ohm resistor um, into this, and then you put your potentiometer on there, and this will be a 10k ohm potentiometer for the 1080 FTW, though I would assume this will, like, the, the thing is, the, the important thing here isn't the absolute value of the potentiometer, it's just the relative value of the potentiometer to what's already on the card, and on my card, the stock resistances are, I think, like, the stock voltage divider to get that 1.35 volts, if I remember correctly, is, like, 2,000 to like a thousand ohms, something like that. Um, I think it's like 2.1 to 0 0.9 thousand. So like 900 ohms to 2,100 ohms. Um, so you want to use like a 10k ohm potentiometer to skew that with that 1k, uh, 1k, ohm, uh, 1K ohm limiting resistor. Because if you crank it all the way to, towards VREF, you're still going to be at like 1.62 volts, which is probably well past the point where the memory scales, but not high enough that you're going to potentially destroy your memory controller instantly like you would if you cranked it all the way to two volts. Um, and yeah, and so then you just put your potentiometer like that and you're done. Like, you don't even need to solder this to ground because you don't actually need the ability to lower the voltage. Now, another thing I like to do with my volt mods is put a switch somewhere um, so that you can turn them off. Um, actually, that... So... This, this, I did not plan this out. <laughs> Whatever. So you want to put a switch somewhere in the, this so that you can turn the modification off, right? Um, so that you can always go back down to that stock voltage of 1.35 volts. Um, and this is specific to the, well, it's not specific to the 1080. I would assume this would work on a 1070. I'm just not sure that the stock voltage on a 1070 is set to 1.35 volts. Um, whereas this, if you, like, if you remove vidbuff and you boot the card, it just boots up to 1.35 volts, so you don't run into any media issues, whereas I'm not 100% certain that the 1070s would, would be configured to do that right out of the box. They should be. Like, that would make sense to me, considering how the 1080 is configured, but, yeah, I don't have a card to verify. Um, but anyway, so that's how you mod the memory voltage, because at this point... You know, as you turn the potentiometer towards uh, the VREF pin, you get more voltage, and as you turn it this way, you get less voltage. Um, now, the minimum voltage that you end up with on this modification, I think, is like 1.38 volts or something. Um, so that's also another reason why you want the switch, is because with any kind of potentiometer, like with any modification like this, where you don't connect this to ground at one end, um, what you're going to run into is that uh, you can't set the voltage to stock. Like, you, you can't set the voltage to the default value because just the existence of these resistors in parallel with the so stock circuitry, or, like, the existence of this resistance in parallel with the stock circuitry means that your m max, like, your minimum voltage with this modification is higher than stock. Um, so that's another reason to include the switch, though it's not particularly... Well, on... on, on GDDR5X card I don't consider it necessary because you or like I've not heard of a GDDR5X card that doesn't scale with memory voltage. They all use micron memory chips. They should all behave the same. Um, so the switch is pretty optional in this scenario. But if you were doing this modification on a card where you're not sure if the memory scales or not, uh, you would probably want the switch so that if you know it doesn't scale with extra voltage, you can turn the mod off. I guess you could also just desolder it. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, um, so that's it for the uh, memory voltage mod for, you know, GTX 1080, uh, GTX 1080 FTW, 1070 FTW, 1080 FTW2, 1070 Ti FTW2, and 1070 FTW2 cards. Um, just do this. It's super simple. And this principle of modification, like, this is how you mod PWM vid cards. This applies to, like, vCore controllers... 
like basically any NVIDIA GPU where you can find the part number of the controller and you can find documentation. And if that documentation says PWM vid, you can just do this. Like you can just do this style of modification to those cards. You might want to use different resistances. Like you, you won't always want to be using like a 10K ohm potentiometer. Um, the V core mod that I have on my say RTX 3060 Ti is using a 100K ohm potentiometer because that circuit has different stock resistances and I wanted uh, a like different amount of uh, initial voltage. But yeah, other than that, like the, this, like the theory behind this modification applies to basically every uh, NVIDIA card going from the 10 series forward because that's when NVIDIA first uh, introduced the PWM vid standard, at least as far as I'm aware. They might have had it on some 900 series cards. I've just never seen it. Um, but on 10 series cards, you have PWM vid and going forward, it's always PWM vid, which makes mo volt modding NVIDIA GPUs super simple. Well, super simple on like a theoretical level. The soldering isn't necessarily that easy depending on where exactly your controller is located. Some cards have them in really awkward positions, but... Um, yeah, the, the 1080, like the, the FTW cards, actually, this is very accessible, right? Like you're right next to the eight pin. There's not really any tall components. Um, and you also have a lot of like empty space around this. So I don't really see that. Like this is an easy card to do. So yeah. Um, so if you have one of these cards and you want to increase the memory voltage to improve the memory overclocking range, this is how you do that. And that's it for the video, so thank you for watching, like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with Actually Hardcore Overclocking, I have a Patreon, there's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the HOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual uh, YouTuber merch. It would be much appreciated if you'd check out the Patreon or the Teespring store because they both help out immensely with running the channel. And uh, that's it for the video, so thank you for watching and goodbye.